When you play quarterback in the NFL, you are a leader of men. I mean, that's something my dad used to say to me when I first got into the NFL. Hey, hey, Christopher, don't forget, you're leading men out there. He would tell my mom, uh, Diana, Diana, you, 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 can't, you can't go to the game. Yeah, you just can't. That's just not safe. I don't, I don't trust it. If we were sitting around the family room and I asked them some of the questions that I asked them in an interview, I'd get an answer like, oh, I should, oh crap, Christopher, I don't know. That was so long ago, I can't remember. But when there's an audience or a microphone, I always hear new stories from my dad. That's some Chris Sims talking about his dad, Phil Sims, and Chris's default voice. Anytime he's trying to impersonate anyone, it's his impression of you. Yes. Every time. That's the only voice he can do. Yes. And you know what's really sad? I, of course, a lot of my friends who have radio shows, they make fun of me that I ask myself questions and go into this other guy. And now when I watch you guys every morning, he's doing it. Yeah. No. So he goes into, yeah. well, you know, people say this, and then he answers the question, you know, yeah. whatever. I just go, oh, my God. So I really am like that. It is. He, he's like, he does the voice himself sometimes when he's trying to, I like, do. make fun of somebody. And then I think really our, uh, my brother, Matt. Matt oh. was the one that really started to, like, own it, and that's where it really got me to jump on. Because he can and, imitate anybody. And Dad, he's got down. He's got Dad down. I'm well, the down. only person he can imitate is you. That's the default <laughs> yeah, I, I all hear the you. time, and I, I hear it all the time. But I feel Mike, like I'm talking Mike, to you. Before anything, I just want to say I'm sorry. <laughs> okay? And uh, I don't know what else to say. Uh, that, that's it. <laughs> and I know I seem you're sitting next to him. Those big ass hands of his, you know, you, he nice. always, he, he's always, he does it to me. And I'm like, hey, I'm getting old. Get your damn hands off me. And, you know, oh, well, whatever. Yeah, well, he does it to me all the time. Yes, he Over, does. Over, under, any given And day, I can tell you really day. love it. Oh, I, it's great. It's great. Especially when he, when he digs his fingers into my leg. There's oh, that's the like worst. That. That's yeah. the worst. That's good. All right. So you are uh, you got back on your Bigelow tea here, right? Yes. Yes. Bigelow well, tea. do you know it's real? Yeah. I, do you drink it? I do occasionally. Yeah. Not as much as I used to. Well, well, you know, I, I've been working for them for 15 years. They've never asked me really to do anything. And I, they asked me this year to come down. I said, oh, I'm honored to do it. I've yeah. been honored to work for the company. They're in Fairfield, Connecticut. And their product is great. I got had to get on a stage once, Mike. Cindy Bigelow, who runs the company, has seven teas up there. And they're covered. And she makes me do the taste test and tell me which one was Bigelow. And I'm thinking, well, if I get this wrong, there you it go. goes yeah. out the door. Right. And I picked it out. You guessed it. I guessed it right. Way I was sweating bullets. I man. bet you were. That was worse than being in front of Bill Parcells after a bad game. <laughs> but so, but uh, it, but it's worked out. Yeah, they got a lot of great teas. I'm a decaf green tea drinker. You see, you got a Mike. You got lemon I got a ginger. Linear. I put yeah, a probiotic. I could have used this last week when my voice was shot. I definitely could have used. Yeah. This. Well, that's what it's good for and too. You can tell when you look at the bag. It's like it is real tea. It's, it's not real. Chopped up. Crap, stuff that's right. been painted brown. It's and, you know, he's a, my son's a germ freak. Are you? He, no, I'm not. You're not he's coughing me all over. He's coughing on me. All oh, all well, yeah. but if you go to their factory, which I have, you could eat off the floors. I mean, it's that unbelievable. Right. And the smell, of course, is magnificent. So uh, it's a great company, and they've been great to me. And Joe Torrey's done some commercials and things with me, whatever. But it's, it's worked out well, and they got a lot of new products out. So you guys try a few of them, see what you think. There's only one caveat. You got to be careful with the string. You can have a mishap. Yeah, did we got that? The The old tea bagger. Best best favorite gift ever, right here. You just have to be careful. You never know. Wait, you never know when the bag's gonna come out of the cup. You know what's great about that? So it happens, and of course we kept it in the show. Right. Because anytime you do something wrong on Showtime, it's going on air. Right. So I come in the next week with a big poster of Bigelow Tea and Me on it, hold it, and I said to Chris Collinsworth. See, they saw that and they got me in the thing. He goes, "Are you kidding?" And he, he goes crazy. Oh, I go, right, you right. dummy! He, he, he believed you. <laughs> he believed me. Yeah. So, oh well, that was good. Um, talk about the game. I mean, a little bit. Just you know, just like your overall thought. Well, I know you guys. I mean, it, it's two weeks. What else can you say about yeah, the game? Right. But you know, I, I've listened to you guys. I do listen to y'all uh, every morning. I do. I might not make the seven o'clock. Starting time. Yeah, maybe but I, second showing at nine. Yeah, for sure then, because right. I'm already usually working by then and looking at stuff, and I listen and watch you, see how you look and all that stuff and whatever. And some of the damn <laughs> things you well, the things you say, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I don't know what to say. But the game, you know, it's this. I, I look, lots of ways to look at it. Can Kansas City make San Francisco throw the ball more than they want? 
and can the San Francisco 49ers dare the Kansas City Chiefs to run the football? Right. Can they dare them? Just yeah. Line up in the defense, go. Go ahead and run it. Right. And, you know, you know my lines about Andy Reid. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, go ahead, give them. They're good. Well, go why, ahead. why does Andy Reid hate to run the ball on first down, Mike? Why? Because he hates second and nine. <laughs> and why do they run it on first down every once in a while? So those wide receivers can rest up before I send them down the field again. That's true. And it's that's him. So even if you dare him to run and it's there, he still might not do it because it, it, he's been that way his whole career. He's great at it. He has adjusted, which I've heard you talk about. We know that some teams have slowed him down, playing a certain style. It fits into San Francisco a little. Yep, yeah, it does. And I can't imagine the 49ers, even with their great pass rush, is going to just say, we're going to cover them. That's just not their style to try to play them, and we can cover these guys one-on-one. -on -one. Do I just don't no. see that. Right. That's one thing we've been talking about, Phil, the idea that the 49ers would just back off and go very deep and force Patrick Mahomes to be patient, whether it's a run or a short pass and take away that that big explosive play that will lift the team that we see them do with the deliver the dagger from time to time. It's just not going to be there. What's he going to do if it's not there? Yeah, well, he's got they've done a better job of throwing it short over the I'd say the last maybe seven, eight, nine games, whatever. Yeah. And uh, but they don't want to. And it, it, it did work. That's what the Chargers did. They dropped back and dared them. And the 49ers are the perfect team to do this, Mike. Why? Because you could throw it in front of them. You watched that game against Green Bay. Green Bay had plays, and Minnesota too, that were, it was like the parting of the Red Sea. And there comes the receiver, the runner, and they get two yards. Because everybody is so fast up front. That Quan Alexander and that, that linebacking yeah, core, right. they Green cover ball. up a lot of bad stuff. Yeah, they do. Yes, it's, I mean, it's, it's really, when I watched them this week, then I turned on a, a film it. Yeah. to watch the championship game with the Tennessee Titans. I went, damn, the Titans look like they're running in slow motion. Yeah, the Chiefs, you meant. The uh, Chiefs running. Or the, no, oh, you the mean, Titans yeah, defense. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Because I was watching San Francisco's defense. Gotcha. And then I turned on the Titans defense to watch Kansas City's offense. And I said, they look, you know, I don't mean this in a bad way, but the speed, the difference was right away. It caught my eye. And the more I watched it, the more it stuck with me. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. There's been a lot of talk about how Kyle Shanahan coaches Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. So, I mean, you with Bill Parcells. Yes. Super Bowl 21. What, what kind of stuff were you hearing from him in the run-up to the game? Uh, you know, Nice. Yeah, I know. He was, he was good to me then. Uh, but, you know, I, I look at that. How many times did I throw the ball in our first playoff game and second one? Yeah, I mean. I mean, none. I threw it 14 times, I think, in the first game. And the championship game, I threw it very few, too. But, you know, we threw a lot of touchdowns, you too, did. which helped. touchdowns, right? Yeah, we threw a lot of balls down the field, whatever. Right. But the week going into the Super Bowl, Mike, we were kind of on a roll. And Bill was not as edgy. We practiced unbelievable. Uh, you know, our practices back then were real. I don't it, like we really hit. In fact, our Monday, we had fights. I mean, real fights. It was like out of control because everybody was so jacked up. Right, right. But we were so precise in practice that on Friday of the before the first Super Bowl, he said to me after I threw a pass, he goes, OK, OK, Whew, man, Sims, you're hot. OK, no, let's. Uh, and he basically stopped practice. Yeah. He goes, we're good. We're just wasting time now. And, uh, you know, Bill was an interesting guy. Hard during the week, but really positive as the game was coming around. Like, beat on you all week and right before the game, maybe on Saturday, he goes, I just want to tell you, man, you're doing a hell of a job. Right. Or something to make you feel good. Right. As I walked out of the locker room once in 1984, my career is on the line. His yeah. is too. Yeah. First game of the year. Philadelphia Eagles. Philadelphia Eagles. Yep. I'm walking out, and he says, say Sims. I go, Yes, coach. He goes, if you don't throw at least two interceptions, then you're not trying, you're not taking enough chances. I said, well, I can take care of those interceptions for you. <laughs> but, you know, that was his way of trying to ease the tension because he always preached, go for it, yeah. be aggressive. And then if you make the mistake, we'll pull it back and, you know, find a way to get it done. Right. Really, really. Yeah. He was a great psychologist, that's for sure. Yeah, it seemed that way. I mean, that's what I always get from him. He could play psychologist with anybody on the on the team. But when you look at Jimmy Garoppolo, too, yeah, you kind of brought it up. Like, what do you? What's your take? Is it fair the criticism Jimmy Garoppolo gets getting in the Super Bowl? Everybody questioning him, doubting him right now. Well, let's look. That's just. Is it fair? That's just the way it is. Come on, you guys know it. 
I mean, that's what I heard probably going to the Super Bowl. I can't remember. You know why? Because I didn't care. Right. And, you know, and it was a different atmosphere then, too. I wasn't being judged by analytics and all the numbers and everything that go with it. So, you know, I found the Super Bowl week uh, out in Pasadena to be very good. Talk to reporters in the lobby after practice. It was really just a di whole different atmosphere. Yeah, yeah you know? it definitely but, was. But, yeah, I uh, – so I didn't get beat on too much then. I just, Mike Lupica, the great writer for the Daily News, as I did my last little press conference sitting around a table eating breakfast, he goes, you know, Phil, we're getting ready to leave to get on the bus, Mike. He goes, you know, do you know no matter how you play, even if you play really well, the Giants lose, that everybody's going to blame you. And I said, thank you, Mike. That was great. And then I got up and left. You know, that was my last question of Super Bowl week. Who was which, the, which was true. Who I knew. Was, who was the guy during your career that, that you would have liked to have stuffed into a trash can? Was it Lupica or somebody else? No, no. I love Mike Lupica. He, you know, the question, because the question was, it was true, and I yeah, knew it. Right. And I, I went to dinner with our good friends, the Botses. Yeah. Uh, the night before we left, and, and I just sat there, and I just said, my friend said, man, Phil, you know, they're going to blame you. And I said, hey, Randy, shut up. <laughs> I don't but I didn't say that. But I said, yeah, I know. I know I know that's on the line. And I think most quarterbacks know now for sure, Mike, that you go to the Super Bowl, you lose somewhere. They're going to pin it on somebody. Yeah. Oh, you can't win the big one. You didn't come in the big moment. All those kind of things. So, But Jimmy Garoppolo, to answer your question, I'm yeah. sorry. Getting, yeah, getting you're all right. right. You're, you're he, talking sense here. He will. I'll be shocked. If they don't get him off to a good start, right? That's that's what I've that's what Chris been saying. Yeah, yeah. They, get some I, short passes. You, you got to do it. You got to at least make the defense think, and you know those kind of things, right. and and then just get them thinking a little bit, spread them out, whatever it is, and then of course when it's all said and done, they're always going to try to go back to the run game. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you would think that. Yes, Shanahan's aware of everything around it too. He wants to get his guy off to a feeling good and everything like that. The, the only negative to that yeah, is, yeah. Steve Spagnola, I mean, yeah, he could be scary. Hell, he he doesn't have he doesn't say, oh, I'm gonna. He, you never know what he's gonna. Well, do. I worry about right. Tyron Matthew too. Reading what's coming, yeah. seeing what's coming, never being in the right place be. at the right, right time. And Jimmy Garoppolo throws that pass, and whoop, well, there's Tyron Matthew, and everything pops right there. How about that though? How about him, Tyron Matthew? What a comeback year! And when they signed him, I went, ooh, I don't know about that. He is, I have like. Crushed on him about the last you six have weeks. On Showtime and everything. I just show. go, oh my! Yeah. And then when to see him in person, the energy that he has and the way he talks to everybody. And I heard you say Andy Reid said he took over the locker room yeah, like right away. Right. So I, the, 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 he's the guy. They got the guy that was drafted out of LSU that played really well for the Cardinals. And then of course when he got hurt, it took a couple years for him to get back to where he is, and he's been terrific. You know, I'm concerned that one of these two teams is going to deliver an early uppercut knockout, and it's going to not be the close, exciting game that we're hoping for. I think that's very possible. Yeah, I've said it. I've said that too. Uh, you know, this game could be 35-21. It could be 35-17. I don't think the Chiefs will be that team to get the knockout punch. If it's somebody's going to get it done early or get a spread where it's hard to overcome, right. I think that would be the 49ers would be my guess just because I just think the 49ers athletically are better, uh, but that doesn't mean you're going to win. Uh, but I, I just think physically the 49ers have a little edge over, over the Kansas City Chiefs. All right, well, let's, That's hard to say no, I know. with Patrick Mahomes and all Whoa, those receivers. That's so but, scary. I know. It's, it's crazy. But All right, so let's go. Let's hear it. Who's going to win the damn Super Bowl? I want to bid the pick. I want an MVP. We've had a bunch of guys today who yeah. have, have weaseled out of the question. Yeah. We know that you will not weasel out of it. Oh, no, I've already said it. I, I'm, I'm going to say San Francisco 34-21. to 21. Over oh, Kansas City. Wow. And I think Gee. the game will be close, but it'll get lost in the end or whatever. Yes, that's, I, I, I think it's possible. Right. So I'm taking San Francisco. I'm just going with the faster. Boy, it's hard to say that. I that know. They're faster, faster, more physical team. They are overall. They're just not at yeah. the wide receiver position. Yeah, the wide receiver position yeah. is the, the gold medal winning track team, which I've yeah. been saying for a while. So, but, uh, yeah, so I'm not – no, I won't weasel out. I've been doing this every year. I always do it. And I had a terrible year picking games. I don't. How'd y'all do? Me too. Uh, he beat me. I didn't have I, a very I, good I, year I either. mopped up the floor with him. <laughs> <laughs> mopped up the floor. I can tie floor. him, actually, in just regular straight Doesn't picks matter. this week. People don't care him. about that. They care about the spread. Against the spread, it's too embarrassing <laughs> to even <laughs> that I feel badly for him. But I will say I am truly been on a hot streak in the Super Bowls. Yeah. 
Big time. Okay. Last year, I said it on the air seconds before the kickoff. I like the Patriots. The score is going to be lower than everybody thinks, but I like them. And I basically said I like them. To co- they were favored to yeah. cover, yeah. too. Right, right. I, said, I didn't say cover, yeah. but I basically said that. Yeah, right, yes. right. All right. It's amazing how the world's changed. You can say cover now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it really is. And over and everything we're, else. We're, we're actually on Showtime. We pick games against uh, the spread every once in a while. Well, don't yeah, get input from that. him because he's no good at it. Yeah, well, hell, hey, Mike, if I was good at it, I wouldn't be sitting That's here. Right. There you go. I mean, it's the hardest thing to bet on and to win at. Is pro football. Definitely. No doubt about it. So well, hey, many variables. And I haven't hit you in a minute. Yeah, so thank I just you. It's that great again. that you're here. It's not great that he's here. But I feel like I feel like you're my dad too, even though I'm a lot I'm clo- we could be closer to brothers, really, but I hear about <laughs> you all the time from him and I like it. All right, All sure. right. We'll be back with more PFT Live oh. right after this. We all have a cross the bear in life, Mike. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.